There are an endless amount of different ways someone can make coins in Hypixel Skyblock. But which one is the best? Well, we're going to be answering that question. It's Kudra. There. I answered the question. Seriously though, Tier 4 and Tier 5 Kudra have made me billions, and I don't even have that many comps. But one thing I learned was that Kudra is a lot more complicated than it seems. There are a few Kudra guides already on YouTube, and I mean full offense when I say this. Most of them are not that great, and made within 24 hours of the Kudra revamp, consisting of none of the current strategies. That's why I enlisted the help of Tier 5 Kudra world record holder Astral, whose team became so good that the only other team that were capable of beating them were themselves. And we're proud to bring to you the ultimate guide to Kudra. from carrying these party finder randoms. Ah! Ah! Who are you? What are you doing in my closet? Why are you coming out of it? Does this mean you're gay? Isn't that obvious? I'm you! From the future. No, it really wasn't that obvious. Wait, have I finally done something stupid enough that you had to come back to stop me? Well, not exactly, but kind of. The chair that you're sitting in right now, it's causing me so much back pain here in the future. And that's why I'm here to introduce you to today's sponsor, E- Oh, sorry. I'm here to introduce you to today's sponsor, Ewin Racing. Who are you talking to? Ewin is one of the best providers for gaming chairs and desks. All of their products are heavy duty and able to hold up to 400 pounds, supporting even the highest level of Skyblock players. Made from genuine leather and consisting of hubless casters, Ewin prioritizes both comfort and safety. Being both a Skyblock player and content creator, I spend a lot of my time sitting at my desk, editing videos or just relaxing and playing the game with my friends. I'm sure this is true for a lot of you as well, whether you're doing schoolwork or watching a show. We spend a lot of our day sitting down, which is why it's important to have a reliable, comfortable chair that isn't going to destroy your back in the process. I've used gaming chairs before, and I've had some pretty bad experiences with them being either uncomfortable or not durable or both. I made this entire video sitting in the Ewin chair, and I have to say that I am impressed. And if you're the kind of person who likes to eat or drink while gaming, Ewin's got you covered because their material makes it incredibly easy to clean. With an endless catalog of products that come in a variety of different colors, you're bound to find one that suits you. Right now, you can use the link in the description and pinned comment along with code GOODGUYKEV to get 20% off your purchase. Thanks again to Ewan for sponsoring this video. Wait, one more thing before you go. Can you tell me if I ever end up with Pokimane? Well, I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. Oh wait, I have to leave. This video is going to be really long, which is why I've divided it into sections to make it easier to navigate. I'll cover the best way to grind Kudra keys, some quality of life mods, and then go in depth on how to beat each phase and tier of Kudra. Keep in mind that this video will prioritize education over entertainment, so it might get boring at some points, but there is a lot to learn. Let's get into the nitty gritty. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I said gritty. Prior to getting into the guide, I want to introduce you all to Volk Add-ons, a Crimson Isle and Kudra quality of life mod. In several parts of the video, I will reference features that this mod has that aren't provided by other mods. You'll need to have the chat triggers mod, and you can import the module by typing in slash ct import volk add-ons. All chat triggers modules are checked for token loggers, so you don't have to worry about losing your account or any security issues. If you need help with anything regarding volk add-ons, feel free to join my server, where I'll post a thread to answer any potential questions. At any point, if you're unsure if you're downloading the right things, do not download anything and confirm everything is safe to install first. Before you even enter a run, you'll need to make sure you stock up on Kudra keys. There are five different tiers, each corresponding to a tier of Kudra. The cost of each key should be on the screen now. Nether stars are dropped by Vanquishers, which have a 1 in 640 chance to spawn when an enemy is killed on the Crimson Isle. However, there are several different ways to increase this chance. The easiest way is to max out the Wither Piper perk in the Crimson Essence Shop. The Kudra pet can also increase rates, and having Enderman Slayer level 9 provides a boost as well. You can increase the odds up to 1 in 391.68 with Enderman Slayer 9, a level 100 epic or legendary Kudra pet, and maxed Wither Piper. The fastest way to spawn Vanquishers is by killing Flares, which spawn in the Magma Boss Chamber. Using a Gauntlet of Contagion, 
Each flare kill counts as three, tripling your efficiency. You want to use a Hyperion and be able to one-tap them, as they do do a ton of damage no matter what stage of the game you find yourself in. You are guaranteed three Nether Stars from your own Vanquisher, even if you deal no damage to it. Everyone who deals at least 1 million damage are guaranteed one Nether Star, and the player who delivers the last hit has a chance to drop an extra. You can grind Vanquishers together with a party of up to 5 others, although I wouldn't recommend more than a total of 4 party members as it can get incredibly chaotic. All players grind flares in their own lobbies. When a Vank spawns, the spawner then warps the party into their lobby, where each player will loot share by getting their damage in. Party members can take turns getting the last hit so everyone has a fair chance to get an extra star. You can also corrupt the Vanquisher to triple its health so more players can get hits in. Bulk add-ons has a feature where you can enter the names of everyone you want to warp. Upon a Vanquisher spawn, the mod will automatically party everyone on the list and then warp them into the lobby. It will then post the coordinates of the Vanquisher's location. After the Vanquisher is dead, everyone will return to their own lobbies and continue to kill flares. So the base requirements are going to be kind of high for Kudra. I recommend a Hyperion at the very least for the first two tiers. I think these two tiers are the only two where you may be able to get away with using a Juju Shortbow instead of a Terminator. You'll also need the personal shop item, which you can buy for 100,000 coins in a Kudra instance, a Gyrokinetic Wand, any Lava Rod, and lots of Ender Pearls. A set of Ember Armor would be really nice, and it's super cheap, so there's no reason not to go for one. You'll want your talismans to be on mana-based reforges, such as Sighted or Bazaar. For tiers 3 and 4, you'll need everything from the tiers before as well as a set of 3 fourths tear. At this level, the attributes and level of the armor does not matter. You'll also absolutely need the Terminator, preferably with Duplex 1. Duplex 1 and Duplex 5 make negligible difference in Kudra, so there's really no need to go for Duplex 5. You can get away with using Storm up to tier 3, but it's at tier 4 where it becomes really really nice to have a decent set of Burning or Higher Aurora. The best attribute pair is Mana Pool and Mana Region, but it's expensive and absolutely not necessary. If you can't afford God Roll Aurora, you can mix and match other attributes such as Vitality or Breeze. If you are playing Stun, you'll need a Gemstone Gauntlet or any Drill that's better. I'll provide more detail on Stun later in the video. You'll want your talismans to still be on mana-based reforges, such as Sighted or Bazaar. For tier 5, the attributes and level of the tear start to really matter. Ideally, you want dominance on your tear, and the second attribute can basically be anything. However, dominance, vitality, is god roll. But it can be quite expensive and it's not necessary. You'll probably want burning or better terror, depending on the damage output of your team. A withered Ragnarok axe would be really nice to have too. You'll also need a warden helmet, and Aurora is basically considered mandatory at this point. I will state that it is possible to continue using Storm, just not ideal and very not fun. You'll want your talismans set to Fortuitous and go for the highest crit chance possible. If you really want to sweat Kudra, a few optional items include a Terminator with Rend, Sword of Bad Health, and Reaper Armor. So the typical team composition for Kudra includes three specialists and one crowd controller. If your team is competent enough to not need a CC, it's best to go for all specialists for faster Ballista building speed. Now Kudra's 1 to 4 have 3 phases to the fight, while Infernal Kudra has a 4th. The supplies and build phase are relatively similar across all of them, but the hits phase is a bit different after Kudra tier 2. The first thing you do as soon as the run begins is to buy your route, and think of this like picking your class. You'll need to max out the head start perk so you can start the run with 50 tokens. Do this as soon as possible so that you are able to buy your class at the beginning of a run. Supplies are the first phase of Kudra, and often the biggest indicator of a party's skill. This portion will probably be the longest part of the video because there is a lot to teach and a lot to learn. You'll need any Lava Rod, Ender Pearls, a Mage Setup, and a set of Ember Armor. There are 7 possible spots supplies can spawn, and 6 total supplies per run. That means for each run, 1 out of the 7 possible spots will not spawn a supply. A Pre is a term that is generally used to refer to the first 4 supplies that are grabbed. Triangle, Cross, Equals, and Slash are the most difficult supply locations, which is why it's recommended to grab these while the tentacles are still spawning at the beginning of the run to avoid having to get them later, since it will be significantly more difficult once tentacles can grab you. Square is referred to as a free supply, which means it is basically guaranteed to be able to be grabbed. There are two supplies at Triangle, and for the sake of the video, I'll refer to this one as Triangle 1 and this one as Triangle 2. Triangle 1 is the one you want to pre. Triangle 2 can be free depending on the position of the tentacles. There are also two supplies possible at cross, which I will refer to as bottom cross and side cross. The team should spread out across the map, with each person taking a supply. Remember to avoid grabbing square or triangle 2, as these can easily be attained later. Precast your rod after buying your route and reel the supply in as quickly as possible once it spawns. Hopefully, you're able to grab the supply before a tentacle throws you. You can then ender pearl by quickly hotkeying. 
At some spots, you can pre-throw an ender pearl and have it land as soon as you grab the supply. A good rule of thumb is to place your supplies at the pile directly corresponding with your crate location. At any point, if you fail your pre or are generally unable to grab a supply due to tentacles, there are a few methods that can guarantee it. Wherever Kuja spawns is a free spot, as there are no tentacles. You can also do the cannon tactic, which involves reeling a supply near a cannon, grabbing it, and then hopping onto the cannon. You must then spam fire the cannon, which prevents you from being thrown. Make sure not to move once you mount the cannon, as the slightest movement will make you lose grasp of the supply. If all else fails, you can always resort to the barrier trick. Find the closest place at the edge of the map that is free from tentacles. Using ember armor to negate lava damage, drag it as close to the edge as possible and dive under the lava. The intention is to get under the barrier blocks present at the edge of the map and grab the supply in this way. I have found that looking up at the supply helps with triggering the grabbing mechanic faster than just looking forward. You can then pearl back to the island. I will now explain the supplies in greater detail. The closest player to Square, which is usually Slash, is responsible for grabbing Square once their first supply is obtained. Square is always free, as long as you stand at the very corner of either of these two blocks. The top block is preferred as it allows you to pre-pearl. For Triangle 2, any of the following blocks can be used as a safe spot as long as you are at the very back of the block, with your back against the block behind you, if that makes sense. This safe spot is only functional when there is not a tentacle right up against it. If I'm unable to grab Triangle 2 in this fashion, I usually drag it to the edge of the map to use the Ember Armor tactic. Generally, for cross, you can pre the bottom or the side. It doesn't really matter. However, you cannot pre bottom cross the normal way consistently, as tentacles spawn too fast. Because of this, you have to use Ember Armor and start at the edge of the map, recasting your rod towards the island and dragging it to yourself once the run begins. You can then go under the barrier blocks to grab it. For side cross, you can use the cannon tactic, since it spawns close to the cannon. If one of the crates at cross does not spawn, just grab the second one. For triangle 1, equals, and slash, you want to do your best to grab these during your pre. If you're unable to grab triangle 1, you have a lot of options. You can drag it to the triangle 2 spot, the cannon to perform the cannon tech, or to the edge of the map for the emperor armor tech. If there's a spot near you where there are no tentacles, then that spot will be best. Observe your choices, taking note of the location of the tentacles for that run, and choose whichever will be more efficient. If triangle 1 does not spawn, just go for triangle 2. For equals, you'll want to drag it to cannon if you fail it during your pre. You can move to cross or triangle to either help them with their supply or to grab the second crate that spawns there once you're done with your supply, or if your pre does not spawn. For slash, you can drag it to this corner if there are no tentacles here or pull it all the way to the square free spot. Since slash is closest to square, you should aim to also grab square once your first supply is placed or if your pre does not spawn. After supplies are gathered, the next stage is building the ballista. The specialists should put all of their tokens into ballista mechanics. The difficulty of the build phase depends slightly on the speed in which your team completes supplies, as faster supplies means less tokens, and less tokens means lower levels of ballista mechanics. If your team is running 3 specialists 1 crowd control, the specialists will build while the crowd control clears mobs. Having Blight Slayer helps with clearing. If there are no mobs, the CC can also build. Avoid stacking on the same building spot and do not stack on L. Tentacles will smash the ballista periodically, destroying progress, which is why it is essential to try to finish building before tentacles begin smashing. Fresh tools doubles your building speed temporarily, so it is important to try to max this out as soon as possible in the Crimson Essence shop. If blazes spawn, the CC should kill them as soon as they appear, since they are clumped together and easier to kill. If the blazes manage to separate and fly up, or sometimes they just spawn flying, you should align with the gyrokinetic wand to prevent dying while the CC kills them. At any point, if blazes are in the air, the CC can buy the mini nuke item to lower their health significantly and make them easier to kill. You should also align if Omega spawns. Bulk add-ons has a feature that creates waypoints at unfinished build piles to make them easier to spot as well. Depending on the pacing of the run, this is usually when dropships spawn. When there is one dropship, all you have to do is make sure you are aligned. When there are multiple, the team should gather together in a corner of the map and take turns aligning. Each align is able to last two dropships. Make sure to establish align order so players don't align together at the same time. I like to use Volk add-on's dropship warning since it flashes in the middle of my screen and is typically when I like to align. For tier 1 and tier 2 Kudra, you can do enough damage to Kudra just by shooting orbs into it. You can also punch these orbs. If your team is fast enough at grabbing fuels, it can be faster to fuel the ballista and shoot it. There will be a section dedicated to fueling Ballista further into the video, but generally, you want to get Kudra to about 50% health if Tier 1, and 40% if Tier 2 with the orbs before shooting the Ballista. Now, the hits phase for burning Kudra and above are a bit different. Actually, it's very different. One of the players on the team should be the designated Stunner. It is best for one of the specialists to be a Stunner, as they are able to upgrade the Mining Frenzy perk. 
The stunner buys the human cannonball item right after the ballista is built and left clicks one of the cannons on the side. If you can, align before you climb onto the cannon to avoid being killed. If there are knockers, clear them first, as they are able to knock you off the cannon. Aim at Kudra, and the cannon will fire you into its belly. You should AOTV onto the spot shown in the video right now, as this will keep you out of range of the mobs inside the belly. Using a gemstone gauntlet or better, continuously mine the pods until Kudra is stunned. Don't forget to activate your mining speed boost. Part of the mountain perks do apply to Kudra pods, and if you own a Devon's Drill with blue cheese omelet and have mining speed perks maxed, you can perform an insta-stun, providing you have sufficient mining speed. Devon's armor and blaze pet can boost this stat. If you are playing Burning or Fiery Kudra, leave the belly as soon as you stun to help with hits phase. If you are playing Infernal Kudra, you'll need a Sin Secure Scythe. Right before Kudra is killed, use the Scythe's ability. If timed right, this will allow you to stay in the belly, which skips the death animation entirely. A good time to Sin Seeker is around 40% health, but if you struggle with timing this properly, you can always spam the Sin Seeker Scythe at 1 second intervals. If you're not the stunner, your responsibility will be damaging Kudra. During this phase, Kudra's health goes down based on the number of hits rather than damage. Because of this, you'll want 3 fourths tear with a duplex terminator and a precursor eye. Your attack speed will matter in this phase. You'll also want to be using toxic arrow poison as this does big boy damage in the hits phase and was a big contributor to the world record run of 128. Using toxic arrow poison does make precursor eye optional, but you should still aim to own one as it does help a bit. I do want to note that Toxic Arrow Poison has a huge chance to be patched sometime in the future as Menacing Banana reported it to the admins the day it became public. If Toxic Arrow Poison is patched by the time you're watching this guide, the hits phase is a little bit different. The stunner will cannonball into Kudra and mine the pod until it is at about 5%. They should let the team know whenever they are ready to stun. The three other team members will have to gather fuel in a similar way to gathering supplies. Square, Triangle, and Cross are always free due to the way the tentacles spawn. Equals can be free by using the cannon tactic. Unlike supplies, fuel respawns after it has been grabbed, so you can grab again from the same spot if necessary. Since there are 4 fuels and 3 players, a good rule of thumb is whoever grabs their fuel first is responsible for grabbing another. Once the ballista is fully fueled, one player will mount the ballista. Be sure to switch your armor to terror prior to climbing on. They will then instantly shoot the ballista. The stunner should wait for the ballista mounted message before stunning. While all of this is happening, the two remaining players should be at Slash in Tear Armor pre-firing. Once the Ballista is shot, the shooter will then teleport to Slash to help with the hits phase. Be sure to teleport up and over to the spot instead of walking, as walking or teleporting horizontally will aggro mobs. No matter if you're using Ballista or Toxic Arrow Poison, you should be able to one phase if done properly. If not, simply repeat the steps a second time. If Kudra HP is below 70% after the first attempt, you won't need Ballista for the second attempt. For Infernal Kudra, there is a final phase to the fight that is not present in any other tier, where the team actually kills Kudra. If the stunner successfully pulls off the Sin Seeker Scythe, the team will be teleported into Kudra's lair. Otherwise, a cutscene will play where the ground will give in, and the team should jump into the hole. In this phase, everyone should wear a Warden Helmet and 3 fourths Tear with Dominance. Damage actually matters a lot, so the tier of the armor and attributes will be relevant. This phase is especially difficult, because once you die in this phase, you're gone for the entire rest of the run. The main concern are the floor and orbs. Different sections of the floor will change color, and once the floor is dark red, tentacles will smash down on that section, or TNT will explode, instantly killing anyone within range. You can align for tentacles, but you cannot align TNT as they kill you through everything, even Spirit Mask. In short, if you see red on the floor, avoid it or jump. There will also be orbs on the map that explode and deal your max health and true damage. To survive them, shoot them off the edge or align yourself. Is infinite, infinite. Oh, don't shoot it back at me! <laughs> you can also use something that gives you immunity or overflow healing, although aligning and shooting works best. Ujo will peek out of the lava periodically in one of the four walls, which is your opportunity to deal damage. One player, usually the one with the worst gear, should last breath. Generally, you want to avoid having the stunner last breath as they don't have terror stacks. If you have a duplex last breath, you can shoot three times. You'll have to shoot it five times if your last breath does not have duplex on it. Everyone else should shoot Kudra and attempt to deal as much damage as possible. Ragnarok Axe's ability, which applies the weapon's strength to you, can be cast to gain a good amount of damage. Keep in mind that this ability takes 3 seconds to cast, and if you are hit, the ability will cancel. This includes arrows from your teammates as well. Sword of Bath Health can also grant up to 100 strength and can be cast instantly. You can also quickly swap to 3 4 Sweeper Armor and Enrage, then switch back for boosted damage. It's helpful to have pearls on hand to pearl out of potentially dangerous situations. 
As for the Terminators, you can use a mix of Fatal Tempo and Duplex for Ferocity. However, Rend is currently the best enchant for Final Phase Kudra, but it requires a lot of team coordination and is all around a bit too complicated for this video, but I may dedicate a video to this mechanic in the future. At the end of the run, you'll be presented with two chests to choose from. The first is a free chest, which will have some Crimson Essence in it. The second will require a key that corresponds to the tier of Kudra you just defeated. You can only open one of these two chests. The second chest will be guaranteed to have Kudra Teeth and Crimson Essence, and you'll get more of these if you complete higher tier Kudras. This chest will also have an armor piece with a random pair of attributes, with the attributes being higher level and higher level Kudra. There are a few other items on the loot table as well. If you have trouble evaluating the prices of the armor pieces you're dropping, since certain attributes are worth a lot more than others, you can use the Kudra Gang bot located both in my Discord server and the Kudra Gang official Discord by using the slash attribute price command or slash evaluate to see the prices of all pieces in your inventory. And that is everything you should know about Kudra as of May 2023. This video is definitely one of the longest videos I've ever made and I sincerely hope you were able to learn something from it.